गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू ऑल सो टुडे फ्रेंड्स वी आर गोइंग टू सी द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ अवर सेवन स्टैंडर्ड जियोग्राफी एंड टुडे आई हैव डिसाइडेड दैट आई विल नॉट यूज द प्रेजेंट दिस पावर पॉइंट प्रेजेंटेशन टुडे जस्ट फॉर अ चेंज वी आर गोइंग टू सी इट जस्ट फ्रॉम द पी डी एफ सो इन दी एंड यू कैन गिव मी द फीडबैक पर्सनली और ओवर ऑन द टेलीग्राम ग्रुप दैट विच वन इज बेटर सुटेबल फॉर यू गाइज और विच वन यू लाइक ओके सो I am on a different, different experimentation method to make this videos more interactive and more interesting for you guys. So, friends, <clears throat> uh, yesterday we have seen the chapter of about environment, and today we are going to see the chapter about in inside our earth. So, yesterday's chapter was related to environment, and today's chapter is about inside of our earth. So, this is more related to geography. Okay. So, let us understand this. Uh, everything about earth and what is there inside the earth so this chapter is dealing with the rocks it is dealing with the overall layers of the earth okay so guys uh this chapter is going to come again in 11th standard where we are going to see the detail uh, much much more detailed and same things are going to repeat in the 11th standard in more detailed manner okay so let us understand this uh, 7th standard ncert is also covering sufficient amount of uh, information about this chapter which can be asked in prelim examination okay so let us start with this interior of the earth so friends generally when we say earth we remember this uh, spherical sphere okay so uh, revolving around the sun but generally since our childhood we don't childhood we don't know what is there inside the earth so earth's interior is like an onion okay so here you can see that this is an earth and onion if you see onion how is it it has it has a peels it has a various layers one layer after one layer one layer after one layer layer and finally when you reach to the last layer it still there you have a smaller smaller layer inside so there is onion is nothing but combination of all the layers we call it as a onion similarly this earth is also like in that onion so it has a different different layers so topmost very thin layer like an onion it has a very small thin layer on the top okay so we call this topmost layer as a mantle okay so this mantle uh, sorry this called as a crust so crust is a topmost layer over here you can see so this is a crust the uppermost part of the earth is a crust so this crust so here we can see this is a crust so this crust has a different different uh, characteristics in terms of whether it is an oceanic crust or continental crust if you see the continental crust okay just by looking it it looks very very big oceanic crust look very looks very thin continental crust looks very thick but density wise oceanic crust is more denser than the continental crust continental crust has a less density but thickness wise if you see continental crust average thickness is 35 meters kilometers and oceanic crust average thickness is only 5 kilometers but if you see the overall density then density is more in terms of oceanic crust compared to continental crust now when we are saying this oceanic crust and continental crust then you should understand the composition of those crust okay so before going to the see the composition let us understand there are certain facts which are given over here they are very very important they can be asked in exam so the deepest mine in the world it is in the south africa okay so it is a 4 km deep getting it okay so this deepest mine there is also a deepest uh, uh, that exploration is going on in arctic region the the mine is called kola but that is an abandoned mine so right now we have the deepest mine in the africa which is almost about 4 kilometers 4 km deep okay so to reach the center of the earth you will have to dig a hole about 6000 kilometers getting it so 6000 kilometers if you want to reach to the center so you can see it's a radius so almost the radius almost the radius of the earth you can see is 6000 kilometers so this question can be asked in the prelim so these facts are very very important from that point of view now let us understand the overall composition of mineral composition of the earth's crust so
So Earth's crust, as we have seen, it can be classified into two types, oceanic crust and continental crust. Oceanic crust is a denser continental crust, is a less dense. Continental crust is made up of silica and aluminium or alumina. So that is why it is also called as a Cl. Getting it? So Si for silica and Al for alumina. Oceanic crust is made up of silica and magnesium. So the first few letters of these two elements, Sima or Sima. So Cl and Sima. So this is a continental crust which is made up of silica and aluminium. And this is the oceanic crust which is made up of silica and magnesium. So Cl and Sima. So these are the two important factors which can, these things can be asked in the preliminary examination. Okay. So if we understand the region below the earth crust is known as mantle. So let us go over here. So first region is known as crust. It is up to 35 kilometers, 35 to say 40, average 40 kilometers. Below that you go to the mantle. Mantle, when you go to the mantle, mantle is almost size of the mantle is 2900 kilometers. Okay. So it's about 2900 kilometers is the overall, uh, we can say the, the total size or radius of the mantle. So after mantle, we enter into the core. So we have three important parts of the earth. First is crust, second is mantle, third is core. Further, these parts are divided into the subparts. Crust is divided into the oceanic crust and continental crust. Mantle is divided into again two parts, upper mantle, lower mantle. Core is again divided into two parts, outer core and inner core. And they have different different properties. They have different different temperatures. They have different different densities. Okay. So these are the different different uh, layers of the earth. So we have seen that continental crust is made up of silico, silicon and aluminium. Oceanic crust is made up of silicon and magnesium. So Cl and Sima, these are the two parts of the crust. So beneath as you go, then you get the mantle. So mantle, how much is, is it? It is 2,900 kilometer just below the crust. So from to, from the boundary between crust and, man, uh, crust and mantle to the boundary between mantle and outer core is the distance is 2,900 kilometers. Okay. So the innermost, then after that, you go to the core. After the ma mantle is finished, next layer which starts is the core. So core, so this is the innermost layer of the earth. Okay, innermost layer of the earth and it can be divided into two parts. Okay, inner core and outer core. So <clears throat> innermost layer of the earth, so its radius is around, around 3500 kilometers. And core is made up of dominant elements called as a nickel and iron or ferrous. So this layer is known as nife layer or knife layer. But knife spelling don't say K-N-I-F-E, it's a N-I-F-E knife or nife, simply you can call it as. So core is made up of knife or nife layer. Okay. So these are the three important layers of the earth. Again, on this side, you can see the important facts. Okay. So the crust forms only 1% volume of the overall earth. Okay. Mantle consists of the highest volume that is 84%. Okay, and uh, mantle consists of 84%. Okay, sorry, this uh, underlining is not uh, uh, this. Uh, I think some issues are there over here in the PDF. So mantle uh, is uh, occupying the highest volume that is 84%, and 15% is the volume of core, and overall radius of the earth is 6,371 kilometers. Okay, so 6,371 6, kilometer is the radius. Okay, so these facts are very, very important. They can be asked in the exam. So now guys, these are the various parts of the earth that we have seen. Hope there is no confusion in this. Uh, now, this 
all the earth or entire earth is finally made up of either lava molten or we call it as a molten magma or cooled lava or we call it as a rock getting it this rock is made up of small small minerals so let us understand rocks and minerals of this different different parts of the earth so before going to the rocks and minerals let us understand there are three types of rocks okay rock first of all the definition is nothing but an aggregate of minerals one or two minerals when the aggregate forms we call it as a rock when we separate a particular mineral from from the rock then it that is a separate separate mineral we call it as a gold we call it as silver getting it but when the aggregate of all these uh, minerals okay one rock will have iron it will have aluminum it will have a calcium it will have uh, uranium we will call this as a rock but if you separate them then we will call it as a separate mineral so this is a difference between rock and mineral earth's crust is majorly made up of rock whether it is a oceanic crust or whether it is a continental crust they are majorly they are made up of rocks as you go deep downwards okay this rock get melted out and it gets converted into the molten magma or molten lava getting it so these rocks okay are the major phenomena of the crust and inside the rock you have minerals inside the minerals you have elements inside the elements you have atoms and inside the atoms you have electron proton neutron and in that you have a quarks getting it so this thing goes like that so rocks and minerals so there are three important types of rocks which are those three important types of rocks first is a igneous rock then you have a sedimentary rock then you have a metamorphic rock okay so igneous rock sedimentary rock and metamorphic rock three types of rock so these names are again latin names they are coming from the latin culture igneous so we can say like agni we can compare this word with the agni igneous ignis it means fire okay so this rock is a direct result of a fire which is inside the earth or heat inside the earth which melts the rock so that's why this is a very compact very hard rock we call it as a igneous rock when igneous rock is formed generally when uh, lava comes on the surface and it cooled cools down magma comes and it cools down on the surface okay it becomes rock once that rock uh, is there we call it as a igneous rock so for example basalt so when this rock has been formed newly formed rock either plateau will be formed or mountain will be formed when these plateaus or mountains are formed on that particular mountain river will be formed this river will erode that particular mountain this air will erode the running winds will erode that particular mountain the glaciers are formed they will erode that particular mountain and small small parts of those mountains will come out we will call it as a sediments this sediments will flow somewhere down and they will accumulate above each other then because of the chemical process between them certain chemicals will be secreted from these rocks and these rocks will get compacted then that rock will be called as a sedimentary rock okay so this word is coming from the sedimentum okay so this word is coming from the sedimentum sedimentum means settling down okay so here <coughs> so sedimentary rock word is coming from the sedimentum now this sedimentary rock has been formed further more sediments are going to sit on the already uh, deposited sediments and the sediments at the bottom of the earth are going to get pushed down and down and down further it will go very much down when it will go very much down the temperature will increase as it is going down interior of the earth as this temperature is going to increase then what will happen this grains of the minerals inside that rock they will change their structure they will change their arrangement when they will change their arrangement this process is called as a metamorphosis this word again is coming from the latin word it it means changing in the form so metamorphosis means changing the form of anything so rock changes their form their mineral composition uh, changes their arrangement of the mineral changes and new types of rock develops which is called as metamorphic rock so this process of metamorphosis so what type of rock will be formed that will be dependent upon the process of metamorphosis so degree of metamorphosis will tell you what type of rock will be formed okay just clay will be converted into chalk that will be converted into slate that can be converted into further 
uh, other type of rock as the degree of metamorphosis increases getting it so these are the three types of rocks that we have seen okay so this igneous rock is also called as a primary rock because this is a first rock which forms when lava cools down okay now again friends lava can be cooled on the surface of the earth in the open environment or it can be cooled below the crust so if it cools below the crust the cooling of the lava will be very very slow so when cooling of the lava is very very slow the grains of the minerals will be formed will be bigger so this type of rock is known as a intrusive type of rock getting it if that particular lava comes on the surface and it cools down then grains will cool very fast then size of the grain will be smaller so this type of rock will be known as an extrusive rock so the igneous rock is of two types intrusive rock and extrusive type of rock okay so this intrusive uh, type of rock so for example okay uh, basalt deccan plateau for example this uh, lava has been formed on the surface okay so uh, deccan plateau okay is also an example okay of one of the rocks okay so here molten magma okay uh, when it cools down inside the earth okay then granite will form deccan plateau is made up of basalt okay so we can call it as an it is an example of extrusive type of rock granite it cools down deep okay deep inside the crust okay so slowly slowly cooling 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 down is very slow so they form very large grain so granite is an example of intrusive type of rock okay so uh, as we know that gr uh, granite uh, is uh, very useful for us since its uh, grains are little bigger so it is used for various purposes like we make kitchen uh, ancient time this kitchen utensils and all they used to uh, they used to be made up of granite then if you want to paste made paste out of something you want to piece masala then uh, then you have to use the granite thing getting it so you might have seen in your grandmother grandmother's kitchen nowadays definitely we don't see it because we we use the mixer grinder okay so this is the usage so basalt and granite they are the different different types of rocks and their purpose is of different different types okay so <clears throat> sedimentary rock as we have said that sedimentum that is settling down of the various uh, rock particles and because of the secretion of certain chemicals sedimentary rock is formed okay so these sediments are transported deep down maybe uh, mm -hmm. for example western ghat is made up of uh, basaltic rock these sediments will go to somewhere on the coastal andhra region and there you will have a sedimentary rock so they can be flown uh, flown away very far distance and sedimentary rock will be formed a certain 1000 kilometers away from where the original rock was there getting it so this type of rocks are known as a sedimentary rock okay so example of that is a sandstone so you might have seen the sandstone i think mathura's cultures and arts if you see art and culture so mathura's cultures are made up of sandstone okay so uh, this sandstone is a sedimentary type of rock then when as you guys know that uh, since uh, these uh, particles of the rock will be coming from long distance like himalayas particles will come from and western ghats particle will come from at the coast of andhra or coast coast of odisha so here by coming in between they will carry lots of dead organisms inside them so these dead organisms will also accumulate inside these sediments and it will get fossilized into these sediments so sedimentary rocks are very famous for finding the fossils of various uh, different different animals and birds okay specifically fishes you will see different different fossils so fossils are nothing but a dead plants animals trapped inside the rock layer you are calling it as a fossils okay so this is a very interesting thing how fossils are formed you should visit uh, certain uh, places like rajasthan and all certain parts of the himalaya hill where you will see these fossils easily you can just traveling you can see the fossil inside those rocks okay 
So these are the two types of rock. First was a igneous rock. Second is a sedimentary rock. Further, as I have told, sedimentary rock itself can be converted into the metamorphic rock because of the process of metamorphosis. So here they have given the photograph of metamorphic rock. Okay, so definitely on this photograph you cannot understand what exactly metamorphic rock. Okay, but understand sedimentary rock. There is a no change in the structure of the grains, no change in the arrangement of the grains, but. in the metamorphic rock there will be change in the arrangement of the grain grains because of the change in the pressure volume and temperature so whenever there is a change in the pressure volume and temperature what you will get is a metamorphic rock okay so limestone and limestone is also an example of the sedimentary rock marble is an also example of uh, sorry uh, the metamorphic rock not sedimentary rock so igneous and sedimentary rocks can both can change into the metamorphic rock so for example uh, igneous rock was there basalt and suddenly lava eruption happened in that region and temperature in that region suddenly changed so basaltic rock will change its uh, arrangement of the grain and it will form get converted into the metamorphic rock same thing happened with the sedimentary rock it will change its arrangement and it will get converted into the metamorphic rock so for example on the surface of the crust there was a lots of clay say at the base of the lake there was a clay and suddenly there was an eruption of volcano in that region so that clay will undergo the change in the grain structure okay grain arrangement and that will change into the slate further if metamorphism is very high that will change into the limestone and limestone may change into the marble for further further metamorphism so simple clay is changing into the marble because of the process of metamorphism okay so uh, i hope you guys are understanding it's uh, a little bit uh, very important and important from prelim points of view okay so usage of rocks so rocks as we guys know it is very very useful for us okay we can move make buildings we can make temples we can make sculptures okay so seven stones or pithu hop scotch or saptu uh, stapu or kitkit five stone gitti okay these are the many games also yes, children will play okay when we are small we have played this type of games i don't know what you call <laughs> in your area the names of the game this is a red fort made up of sandstone okay and this is uh, taj mahal made up of marble metamorphic rock okay so this rock if you have seen okay this diagram will tell you that overall there is a cycle of rock they are not in the isolation they are in the cyclical manner they are moving from one region to another region and they are changing their forms so first there was a magma first there was a eruption of magma then the mountain type of you can say igneous uh, this igneous rock has been formed igneous rocks sediments have formed and because of the sediments sediment settled down and they secreted certain chemicals they got compacted and sedimentary rock was formed further this sediments were pushed down okay sediments sedimentary rock was formed sediments were pushed down and because of the change in the pressure volume and temperature metamorphic rock was formed but metamorphic rock it has a certain limit to bear this temperature volume and pressure change if it reaches too high pressure volume temperature is increases at very tremendous level then this metamorphic rock will melt and again it will get converted into the magma getting it so again it is coming back to its original structure we are calling it as a magma okay so in this way this rock is going on into the rock cycle so different different rock cycles are there from uh, igneous rock to the metamorphic rock and back to the magma so in 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 exam if uh, the question is of asked about rock cycle then you can draw this diagram how magma gets converted into the different different rocks and again everything gets converted back into the magma so overall everywhere on the earth what we have is a cycle of certain things okay so this is a rock okay and rocks are made up of different minerals 
these minerals are nothing but this naturally occurring substances which will have a certain physical properties they have a fixed physical properties and fixed chemical composition getting it so minerals they will have fixed physical properties and fixed chemical composition they are very very important for us okay so we are using various minerals some are for important for industrial purpose okay some are important for recreational purpose some are important for agriculture okay so these are the different different some are important for the medical purpose so these are the different different uh, minerals which are found in the different different types of rocks so in andhra we know some places we find find diamonds some places uh, we have uh, uh, lignite and some places we have coal so andhra krishna godavari basin is also very famous for the natural gas okay so this is entire chapter is all about uh, rocks and uh, different different minerals i hope you guys have understood this so uh, like six standard you don't have a mcq i think exercise no you have mcq type of exercise exercise over here as well okay so let us understand these mcqs um, first is a rock which is made up of molten magma so very very simple you will you will answer this the innermost layer of the earth is called as very simple gold petroleum and coal are the uh, examples of very simple rocks within which contains the fossils very simple the thin layer thinner most layer of the earth is very simple okay third again match the following you can take them as an mcq okay so uh, core so minerals rocks clay cl and here earth surface used for roads and buildings made up of silicon and aluminium has a definite chemical composition inner most layer changes into the slate process of transformation of the rock so these are the important questions once you have uh, understood the chapter you will be easily able to answer this question so in the end i will sum up again so rocks are nothing but an aggregate of few one or two minerals minerals are very very important so rocks are nothing but when this lava or magma when it cools down then it gets converted into the rock so first rock or primary rock is known as a said uh, igneous rock igneous means made up of fire then this rock breaks down and then it is transported by the river water winds and then it gets deposited somewhere when it gets deposited somewhere after a few million years a process of chemical secretion happens we call it as a compaction and because of this compaction the new type of rock is formed known as a sedimentary type of rock when this sedimentary type of rock and igneous type of rock it can undergo pressure volume and temperature change then you can call it as a third type of rock metamorphic rock so igneous rock basalt is an example of igneous rock sedimentary rock what is an example of sedimentary rock okay so sandstone is an example of sedimentary rock uh, the uh, delhi red fort is made up of sedimentary rock third is a you have a metamorphic rock so marble is an example of metamorphic rock so guys understand not necessary this processes or this uh, rock cycle should happen in a particular uh, uh, this uh, say free, in a linear manner igneous rock can go back to the magma directly no need to again get converted into sedimentary rock sedimentary rock can be directly get converted into the magma metamorphic rock can directly get converted into the magma getting it or metamorphic rock if sedimentation happens in the metamorphic rock it can get converted into the sedimentary rock so though we have converted yes we have connected links and made it as a cycle but not necessary it is going on into the particular cycle they may directly uh, interfere their position anywhere at any place so i hope you guys have understood this chapter so uh, we'll see the question at uh, 8 o'clock and please also give me the feedback how did you feel this lecture or you want to uh, which which one you like most uh, ppt lecture or this uh, uh, see pdf type of lecture okay so thank you see you for the next